Welcome to Dirt Road Believer. I'm Tina. Thanks for being with me today for No Doubt November. All this month we are exploring all the different reasons that believers doubt their faith. And today you are going to see how absolutely normal and expected it is um, to doubt sometimes and how God responds to our doubt. Um, isolation is a big reason that Christians doubt. And I'm kind of um, reliving a day that I had recently where I had a reaction to something and for t like 24 hours I was just completely out of it and stuck in bed and I kind of went from the bed to the sofa and it felt bad because the rest of the family was just juning around and doing all sorts of fun activities and it left me completely out and so that is a big reason that Christians doubt and we feel isolated for so many different reasons. So we're going to be getting into that very soon in our devotion, but we're going to spend a little time in the kitchen today. Um, this week we've been doing grilled sandwiches, which my family loves and they're such a crowd pleaser and so easy, but I like to get creative with my grilled sandwiches. So we're going to get creative and go in a sweet direction today for this is a great time for harvest and fall and apples. So our sandwich is going to have some apples on it today. So let's get in the kitchen and then I'll meet you right back here for today's No Doubt November devotion. Today we're going to be making a sandwich called Harvest Fluff, and I just love fluffer nutters. Um, I was introduced to those sometime in my 20s, where you have like a peanut butter and jelly, but with marshmallow fluff on it. So I've always liked the idea of sweet sandwiches like that. So today's sandwich could basically be a dessert. But I told you that our um, secret to making a really good grilled sandwich is having something either salty or sour mixed with something sweet. So we are going to start with Granny Smith apples. And you can use any apple you want to. I just like these because they're tart and they're gonna mix well with our sweet ingredients in just a little bit. So I think one will be enough. We're just gonna make one sandwich. So come on over to the stove. I have got some butter already melted. And so we are going to just take our apple rings and put them in the butter. A little bit of peel is okay. I love my apple core peeler slicer because it just makes them so perfect. But we'll put those in there. Sometimes this happens. <laughs> you think you have a video and then you go to edit it and it ends. So you'll notice I have on a different outfit. Maybe my hair looks a little different. Um, I have just finished with work and so I'm coming home to complete. I did complete my sandwich yesterday and it was delicious, but I'm going to uh, re-complete it <laughs> to show you the harvest fluff. All right, so I am right now getting my apples together. It looks like it could use a little more cinnamon. So we're going to put some ground cinnamon in there. And uh, yesterday I had someone helping me with the camera. Today it is all me. So um, I'm going to do my best here. But this sandwich, I'll tell you, when I tried it yesterday, it was... Um, the first bite was really good, but it was really hot. So I recommend letting it cool off for about five minutes before. Now here's the cool thing about the apples. If you like a little bit of bite or crunch to your sandwich, then don't cook them very long. If you like um, a softer, you know, chewier texture, then let them, let them cook for a little bit. All right, we're gonna put together our sandwich now. Okay, we have all of our ingredients ready and we are gonna begin with just a simple oat nut bread um, that's got kind of a light texture. It's not gonna interfere with the flavors too much. 
So we are gonna begin with, um, well, you take your choice. You can either do Nutella or apple butter. I'm trying to go on the lighter side during the week. I did try Nutella yesterday, but I'm gonna try apple butter today. So we're just going to do a thin layer on either side of the bread on each slice. And I love sweets. So you may think this sandwich calls for a little more protein in there. I don't know. I'm, I'm happy with all the fall flavors. So we've got our apple butter next, or you could do Nutella right there if you wish. Um, next, we're going to put on our, this is where the fluff comes from, right? Our jet puffed marshmallow cream. And this is just, you know, to your liking. How much fluff do you want? I want a little bit of fluff, but not much. And that takes, takes a little bit of doing to get it spread on top of this um, slimy apple butter texture, but it will spread. So we get that, and that's the part that just melts together so nicely, that marshmallow. All right. What's next? Oh, our apples. So we're gonna dip our cooked apples out of our saucepan. And then don't neglect to use those drippings. You know, isn't that the best part of fall and Thanksgiving is all those drippings that come so drizzle that right over those apples. It's gonna give it a lot of that cinnamon flavor. All right, and then we're gonna smush it together. And next, we're using our Lando Lakes butter to smear on our bread. Okay, cinnamon sugar butter with one extra little surprise we have for our bread before we put it on the grill or the griddle. Be generous, I say. I, I went with the apple butter instead of the Nutella, so let's be generous. All right, now here is the part of this that I just, how many of you love that, that just that little bit of crunch on top of the muffin or on top of the pastry? Okay, this is what you cannot skip right here. You can take a spoon or I just like to pinch a little bit, but just a fine little dusting of sugar on top just to give it that nice little crunchy edge that is so yummy. All right, we're gonna put this on the grill and we'll do the same thing to the other side um, with the butter and the sugar before we flip it. Okay, I hear my griddle popping. So let's... Put it on there, get it going. And I'm going to get some more of our butter. One-handed, mind you. If I can do this with one hand, <laughs> you should be able to whip several together in no time. Okay. All right, now for our sugar. I'm just gonna pinch a little bit of that so we have that nice sugary bite when we bite into it. It's delicious. I kinda like to hear what it sounds like on the other side before I flip it. Let's check it and see. Ooh, that looks so good. That is perfect, actually. See those apples squeezing out of the side? This is going to be so good. So if you wanted, um, if you wanted some kind of, I don't know, meat on it, um, a light, like an oven roasted turkey might be good. Um, bacon is always a good option, I think. 
Uh, but it just depends on what flavors you want to mix together. That's how I come up with these sandwiches. I just think, what are some of my favorite ingredients? And I just start playing around with them. So that's how fall fluff came about too. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take this off of the griddle and put it on my plate. And we'll cut it in half to give you a, a look at what it, um, what it looks like. But then I'm going to let it sit for just a few minutes before I eat it. Let's go ahead and cut into our fall fluff. I love to look at the inside. I always love cutting my sandwiches in half because you get to see all the yummy stuff inside. And honestly, I eat the middle out first. Oh, doesn't that look good? That looks so good. I can't wait to try it. I have no doubt I'm going to love this sandwich. Look at this. I mean, it has everything that I love about fall. It has the cider taste from the apple butter. It's got the apples, cinnamon, sugar, marshmallow. I mean, brown sugar, everything fall is right here in the sandwich. Now, I think this would be really good if you were gonna make it a meal, if you wanted to pair it with like a cream-based soup, that would be good, um, or just a glass of milk <laughs> with um, maybe another fruit off to the side. That's perfect. All right, I've given it a chance to cool off a little bit. So we'll see what else. Okay, moment of truth. Here we go. I'm gonna have to get a bite like right out of the center on this. Y'all, do not Costco, do not collect $200. You have to try this fall or this fall uh, harvest sandwich. We're calling it harvest fluff. Y'all, it is unreal. And I'm telling you that little crunch, that little sugar on the outside, that really gives it something special. Mm. And I'm always starving right after school, so this is just perfect. I am going to pour myself a glass of milk. Let me swallow, and I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this sandwich. Y'all, it will melt in your mouth. It's so delicious. So be sure you try this at home. And um, as my daddy used to say, it'll make you wanna slap your grandma. So good. <laughs> All right, let's just be honest, guys. Feeling isolated absolutely stinks. It's a rotten feeling. And just that 24 hours that I was isolated the other day, it was like, I don't know, you just, you get down in your spirit. And so, and you think that it will never ever end. So why do we feel isolation? We can feel physical isolation when we have to be away from people, hashtag 2020 quarantine. Um, when we lose someone, death can make us feel isolated. Sickness, depression, um, loneliness. Maybe you feel like, you know, that spouse will never come along. That can make us feel isolated. And then in um, older people, you know, being shut in and having to be away from church and community can make us feel isolated. What I love about today's devotion is that the person who experiences isolation and doubt is someone dearest to Jesus. It is John the Baptist. And we're going to be mostly in Luke chapter 7 today. And this is what Jesus has to say about John the Baptist. This is in chapter 7, um, starting midway through verse 26. Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet, this is the one about whom it is written. See, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare the way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, no one is greater than John. Um, okay, so this is how Jesus feels about John the Baptist. He was sent ahead of um, Jesus to prepare a way for him. He was the first one to start baptizing people. And so we know, we know the importance and the significance of John the Baptist. Now I want us to look at another passage where it shows John is completely isolated. He's been put in prison. Um, 
And actually, he never makes it out of prison. Um, he's beheaded. But let's back up and see where John is feeling isolated. And this leads to doubts about, about Jesus and about who he says he was, coming from the man who prepared the way for Jesus. Um, so I'm going to start in verse 18 and read through verse 20. It says, Then John's disciples told him about all these things, all the miracles that were going on while he was behind bars. So John summoned two of his disciples and sent them to Jesus, asking, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? When the men reached him, they said to Jesus, John the Baptist sent us to ask you, are you the one who is to come or should we expect someone else? All right, we, we feel the isolation. John has had his finger on the pulse. He has been right in the midst of preparing for this ministry. This is actually after he has baptized Jesus and, you know, heaven opens up and the spirit descends. He's seen all of this, but now he is alone. And now the doubts are beginning to creep up on him. Um, and so he sends his disciples, hey, are you, are you really the Christ or is someone else? We hear that doubt. And I want us to look at how, how does Jesus feel about this? Um, so we're going to go on. It says, at that time, Jesus healed many people of disease, diseases, afflictions, and evil spirits. And he granted sight to many blind people. And so he replied to John's disciples, Go and report to John what you've seen and what you've heard. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. Those with leprosy are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised and the poor are told the good news. And blessed is he who isn't offended by me. So after John's messengers left, he began to speak to the crowds about John. And then he goes into what I started with, um, that no man has been born greater than John. And so here's how Jesus reacts to our doubt. First of all, he's not surprised. He's not hurt, but he tells John's disciples, go back and tell him. Go back and testify to what you've seen. He didn't stomp his foot and say, well, of course I'm the Christ. How could he? He's seen. He's No, he responded in gentle love. He understood the isolation. He understood um, why the doubt was beginning to fester. And he says, you know what? Just go testify. Just go tell him what you have seen. And secondly, we see that before the disciples leave, he finishes out his talk and he reminds John of his identity. This is where he says, this was my messenger. He prepared a way for me. And so he builds John up in the faith and he, um, he reminds him who your identity is, what a big and important part you are in this faith. And God will do that for us too. When we experience doubt, he is good enough to remind us and say, you are essential to this faith. I need you. And then thirdly, let's look at verse 29. He says, And when all the people, including the tax collectors, heard this, they acknowledged God's way of righteousness because they had been baptized with John's baptism. And this is just like the coolest part because Many that day, even though John was removed he, from, this, from this scene, he was isolated. Many came to Christ that day because of John, because of what, God, what Christ had to say about him that day. And so guys, God is so powerful that even in our isolation, even in our doubt, we may not physically be present. We may not um, feel that, you know, that, that we're emotionally there, but God can use us even when we're not there, just like he did John that day. And so if you are experiencing a time of isolation right now, whether it's because you've lost someone, um, because maybe things are upside down in your church right now, perhaps you have experienced sickness. Um, there's so many reasons that we feel isolated 
So I encourage you to look at this passage and see what is it really, really saying here. Um, it's saying that God's not surprised about your isolation or your doubt. God is going to reaffirm through the testimony um, of how he is moving and working that you are not alone, that he is who he says he is. And then he is going to reaffirm your identity in him, that he needs you and that he can use you. Whether you're in a time of isolation or of, of, and doubt or not, he can use you. All right, let's look, let's close with just a few more passages that talk about um, how we are better when we are um, together. Number one, um, Genesis 2.18 Then the Lord said, It's not good for man to be alone. So he created a helper for him. In Ecclesiastes 4, 9 and 10, it says, Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their efforts. For if either falls, the companion can lift him up, but pity the man who falls without another to lift him up. And then I'm going to end in Galatians. This is Galatians 6, 2. And it says, Carry one another's burdens. In this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. So here we go, guys. Isolation. We all face it, okay? We all go through a period of isolation, but I want you to look at what John did. Even though he was held captive in a prison, he reached out. He sent others. He, he didn't just um, stay in his own doubt. He reached out to Christ, and so we have to do that in our faith. If we're feeling isolated, we have to reach out. That's why the church exists, so that we can be better together and we can have each other to build each other up when one of us falls. And so if you're in a time of isolation right now, I encourage you, reach out to Christ, reach out to people, reach out to your church. That is our lifeline as Christians. So guys, I hope you have a wonderful day. Be sure and make that delicious grilled sandwich and enjoy that. And um, I will see you back next week. Have a wonderful weekend. And until next time, slow down, take the dirt road.